Really, I'm kind of curious about this one. I have no idea where the circle's going to end up. Going. I mean, he could go north. Oh, come on. Oh, it, my God. There's no way, Spiral. With an ump, a 4x ump at this range. Dreamsh. I don't think he even landed a shot. Okay, we're south. We're southwest. Yep, yep. We got a lot of drumstick in there. Yeah, my yes, and uh, we do love chicken here in PUBG. So absolutely love to see that island in there. Uh, no damage done. Uh, so EU able to successfully land in San Martin and begin uh, the couple minutes of looting uh, that everybody wants to do. Oh uh, yeah, I mean I think uh, again, Los Leones is still being split, but. We haven't seen any fighting out of it, right, Matt? Like, mm -hmm. it's just been kind of, you know, a gentleman's agreement uh, between Overpeakers and, and Tropic that, look, you take one side of it, we'll take the other, and we're not going to mess with each other until, you know, we at least get out of the city. It was, it's a very... I, I, gentleman's agreement almost makes it seem too nice. I mean, that's that's Overpeakers down there. You know they're going to shoot if they see. Well, that's, that's fair. I, yeah, it isn't exactly... That there was no handshake beforehand yeah. that said it, we are going to do this. It's more just like in Tropics, like I, you know, it's, I don't yeah. want to mess with them because they're just going to push us if they, we fight yeah. them. <laughs> the Overpeakers just does not care. Yeah. There is just no caring at all right now for them. But and uh, there's something to be said about that. Like having no fear and playing at this stage yeah. means the fact that you can just be they're brave fifth. and do some plays that other people might be hesitant to do. Yeah, I mean, despite some of the early problems that they've had, they're still in fifth. I mean, they're still playing really, really well, getting a big win. And again, it's like every team that wins that's in the middle of the pack today is just all of a sudden shot up the leaderboard up in the fifth or sixth. And and that's what's going to kind of keep happening if that trend continues. Is I that mean, we were starting to talk about the fact that there's a lot of separation coming out with our top four. But like you're talking about, with these teams just being able to pick up points, now instead of, have, instead of having this like very, very heavy top four, it's starting to flatten out a lot more. Sure, we still have 17 Twisted Minds up at the top, but that slope gets much, much closer now than it did at the start of the day. It's like a heavy top two. And then two under that, it slides a bit, and then OP is kind of in the middle of another pack uh, before you go from sixth to... Uh, you know, I, I guess I'll go to tenth on this one. That's not a big, big difference there. That's six points from there and even then you know qm at 60 a big win will shoot them up the leaderboard you know you can get that 20 point game and all of a sudden you know depending on what ces does you're maybe ahead of them if they kind of bottom out a bit so a lot can change here coming into the last uh, you know the last couple games of the day uh it's two miramars anything's possible and uh that's why we play the games again i talk about it all the time but you know PUBG is more akin to a race a racing circuit it's it's more like uh, poker meets F1. You know what I mean? Like, you're kind of playing odds, you're kind of gambling a bit, and but at the same time, it is a endurance test. Whenever we were working on some of the original point systems for PUBG and trying to figure out how to make it into an eSport, we actually did use NASCAR and the point system I, that they used. I like and that. That's, that's, that was the original foundation for some of the, the point systems that we used in those very, very early online tournaments. Yeah, I, I think that's smart. I mean, this is a race. This is, you know, you're playing game to game. It's like, you know, each different map is a race, a different race. And so, you know, you're finding out who gets first over the course of the event. And that's why you got to play, you know, 15, 20 games uh, to get a really good read on who is actually the best uh, at the moment. And, and Tropic is mirroring uh, CES right next to them. And Cerberus has had a wonderful day today, all the way up into sixth place, winning a game. And uh, let's see how they want to approach this situation. I don't expect them to fight this at this point because, you know, with that road there, with that hill there, there's really not an easy fight to take. This circle is actually pretty preferable for some of these teams that are at the lower end of this leaderboard. Uh, you can see that Tropic already in position right now, taking some shots. Cerberus, who had the still this game, has already started to climb up there. But whenever we're looking in, FaZe already in position. Freaks already starting to find themselves a spot. Uh, this is, with the lower lean into this, a lot of these teams that are really trying to get some value out of just a point or two, did get the inside track to get the points that they find, or the places, I should say, in this situation, most valuable. For sure. Yeah, this is a decent opportunity. And you're going to see kind of like what we saw in the Miramar the other day where teams are going to line up in the center to the east of this circle. Um, we do have, we have had two uh, yeah. that went to this very south part of this. Possible, uh, but unlikely. And ooh, Suju has Isaki down and out. That's a point in the hands of 17. And, uh, you know, again, we talk about this a lot. They're wonderful on Erangel. And if they put up points on Miramar, then it feels like they are almost assuredly going to win this thing. 17 Gaming can't stop, won't stop. Always on the point train. 
there's something around, it's just going to be continuing to assert authority. Twisted Minds now needing to have a big game just to try to catch up and try to make this back into a two-horse race. And 17 just, it's, it's wild that even the time that they get a bad game, everybody else at the top did too. Yeah, I mean, even though Twisted Minds gets the better of it in a way, it still allows everybody else beneath them to catch up. So, you know, as fun as that was to watch, as a, is kind of exciting in a, in a tournament like this, in a moment like that, to see the top two teams butting heads, uh, just kind of, it, it's like two Rams just slamming into each other, just seeing who can stay standing longer. And at the end of the day, it was Twisted Minds barely, but Wildcard has overpeakers spotted. And, you know, we've seen overpeakers play from, they like to play from the south coast in these types of circles. Mm -hmm. We've seen that phase as well. Uh, tends to kind of get more low than not. And a lot of teams like that. Uh, they like to come from the bottom up on Miramar. It gives a little bit of extra cover as time goes on, uh, typically. So, uh, you know, so the old Navi in particular was a team that I, I would love to watch play that way. And uh, we'll see how this works out for those guys. Makes it easier to clean out snakes, too. Whenever Precisely. you're going through Miramar, they're just always hiding in those little dips and divots all over the place. So come in from the south, don't have anybody back behind you, and just start marching your way in a line. Kind of like a Sherman's March kind of situation, just burning everything behind you as you go. Was that Civil War? Is that a Civil War reference? Yeah, dude. <laughs> wow. I'll just bring it anywhere. American Civil War reference on PUBG PGC 2022. Amazing. I, I was not expecting that one today. Somewhere my dad's very happy. He's a huge Civil War buff. Look, I'm not just all anime and weeb jokes. I got some history in my back pocket. Do you? Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll believe you. I, I was more of a World War II kind of guy, you know, just playing like Aces of the Pacific as a kid. I loved flight sims, World War II flight sims. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. As uh, Everybody's just trying to either get east or south, maybe north, uh, you know, kind of. I, I, you know, it's kind of funny. I feel like I can watch the way that these teams take space in a circle one like this because we've seen the circle one three or four times in this, uh, since you and I have been here mm -hmm. in this event. And and teams are almost like gambler fallacing it. Like it's normally going to go east in some in some fashion. But instead, now I'm seeing teams kind of be like, well, we could have that hard shift up to the north. The circles have been so crazy that maybe we expect a crazy. Maybe that's going to happen. That's totally illogical. But at the same time, if you gamble right, if you roll those dice and you and it comes up, you know, snake eyes, then that's awful. But if it comes up two sixes, you say that paper, but see, as somebody that I get, I saw the MPL circle so often, I just always feel it goes down into these hills south of Chumacera. It's not supposed to. It, it may not, but it just always feels it, it like trends that way. For I, I maybe it's just like I think you have like some kind of confirmation bias there, like <laughs> just hey, like <laughs> whatever. Hey, it gave us our really cool Minas General circle later. So. Oh yeah, no, I mean look, they're fun. I, I would prefer to fight on those mountains. I think they're a much more interesting area to fight than in these fields, no doubt about that. I, but yes, it, it's just. There's a lot of land ratio terrain up in there, so typically circles don't like to end up in there. That being said, again, we've seen that sometimes that doesn't always matter as Navi out on the beach. Speaking of Navi making south coast rotations, here they are doing just that. And uh, there is wild card up here. I don't know. They might be driving right into a mat. Oh, Navi. Are they going to read this? Adam is just getting into position in time. He's not going to be able to take any shots, and he's going to get caught out. He is going to at least try to see if maybe he can defend this. Wildcard's not really prepped or going to take some shots, but does manage to get down example. And if you're going to take down somebody on Na'Vi and try to defend, that is a good first pick. Yeah, great setup here for the side of Wildcard. Adam with an AK, though. That spray, tough to control. Couldn't find the knock. Stuns are out. They've got Na'Vi pinned here on this rock formation. And you can see they're going to commit a lot of utility into this. And it's a great angle here for Greg Shot, just mows Uba down. And now it's just going to be the rest of Wildcard coming in. It's just been slow, steady, making sure to be patient with it. Navi, the slide feels like it's just continuing to slope downhill. All right, here we go. Greg Shot going to be pushing some angles. They forced them back a little bit with some stuns. Get some info by crossing that door. Alia trying to use that angle. Really nicely done there. Gets the knock on the cow, but Adam Asmel. Greg Shot here is going to come in and finish the job. Navi's slide continues as they are still in fourth, but it is getting ever so close as OP looms in fifth. And shout out to Confirmation Bias. Went to the south. It did. I don't know. I, it's just whenever I'm around, it just does that. It's I'm very magic. odd. It's I'm very magic. odd. You are magic. It, it, <laughs> I mean, I'm so used to these just shifting towards Los Leones that I just kind of got 
sort of conditioned to it, I guess, myself. So there's a knock and a kill on to 17 uh, from Donawa. So that's, and, uh, you, know, it's, you know, they get the point, they trade a point. Uh, not the ideal start for 17, but going to hold the northeastern edge. Donawa with a wide 2-2 split in front of them. So let's see if anybody's going to find a way to punish Donawa. We've seen them lose players early. You know, we saw Lambu get taken out by Lil Ghost early. So mm -hmm. I guess it's a revenge for Donawa. Get something out of it. Uh, TMA as well as Wildcard are both going to need to move into the circle. And uh, the pathing for either one of them is not going to be the best as see that while 17 did get a kill, now they're also going to lose one as well. This area is wrapped with people, so 17 looks like they're going to be fighting their own way through this one, and looks like TMA is making their sin, and this is going to be a similar path that we might see Wildcard take as they are clinging to life, and the hills are doing them some favors as the trees uh, are not. Oh, uh, okay. So they are, they are fortunate that no one had an angle on them when they hit that tree, because they were stopped for a moment there, and we've seen that multiple times in this event. That the pros will absolutely punish you, Bard. It's a touch of damage on the TMA as they drive underneath the bridge. He's going to be able to see them start pulling up to the rock face. Should be safe for TMA to hide under there as uh, they're hoping for that southern shift that we've seen a couple times on these circles. Uh, again, they are possible, more likely to go n like north or northwest, but it doesn't have to. Uh, you know, we've seen plenty of crazy uh, in this event, so might as well have some fun with it. Now, it will seem plenty of crazy. Ha ha. I, saw, I see what you did there. We were watching crazy Thank at you. the time. I'm ha -ha. so glad you got that. Okay, so wild card. Looks like they're going to need to figure out how they're going to handle this, and their solution is to go ahead and say, hey, TMA, go. We might want that spot for ourselves. So it looks like they're going to continue on their merry pathing right into Overpeakers, right into Cerberus, and right into, I guess, maybe the hillside? Where are you going to really stop? There's not a lot of good this way. It's not fun, uh, but we have seen teams be able to stay underneath this hill line and survive. However, with Cerberus a little bit deeper into this territory, it's given them some firing lines into TMA, and TMA, just by the hair on their chinny-chin-chins, are getting up into the sort of safety <laughs> on the other side of this road. I mean, if Cerberus starts peeking up and over. Now, the good news is, is that TE is also sort of watching this with Ninja, uh, but they've got a huge spread controlling the top of that mountain. Where is this going to go? Is it going to be south again? Are we going towards TE? Are we going north? Okay, so we're going west. So still, uh, this is possible. It could go north or south of this as well. There's kind of two areas like that in, either on the north or the south part of this. Well, remember that whole wild cards, TMA, Cerberus, Overpeakers thing? That just got real, real weird. And uh, now we're going to have to figure out how they're going to do anything with this one. 17's now making a send of their own. Uh, you can see just trying to juke in between the bullets. It's going to be Dano on one side. Twisted Minds are also going to be setting up in just a moment, and they've got a hill that they could look down into this one. Freaks are also taking some shots at Chao Wu as he's trying to move forward, but somehow 17 is just kind of getting away with this. Yeah, they're just kind of squeezing in between people. It reminds me a bit of how Twisted Minds rotates, where they're just able to find enough space between the other teams to safely uh, get to where they want to go. And Lil Ghost going to be the trailing member here with his teammate. I believe it's Show in there. Did Su I think Suju was the one who got taken out. I can't remember for sure off the top of my head. I can't see the name. But uh, as they get kind of overlapped when they're in the cars together. Yeah, it's Show. I can see the U at the end of the name. Or is it Suju? Oh, it is Suju. I'm wrong. It was another U. Well, there's oh, a U you at the end of his name, too. Baited. I got mega baited there. Uh -huh. You got me. I wish I wish I could see their names, but that's not the case. Ooh, a headshot. Yeah, it's always the problem when they give you that plus one. I know. I can't see the other name, and I'm like, it's wait, like going who to a wedding it? and they just give you the plus one, right? You just could take anybody you want. That would be, yeah, that'd be nice. That, yeah, that's. <laughs> oh, okay, where are you gonna go, E United? Is it has been. Not necessarily the most comfortable for them as well, as they're still holding on to a lead over Na'Vi, but it has just been a, a harder day for them to find uh, the successes that they really desperately want. E United trying to find some way to try to at least close in on Twisted Minds, but Twisted Minds, and you gotta get to them and 17 are just not relenting. No, absolutely not. Oh, oh, uh, I love I to see it. Oh, Bard, they spun him out on purpose. Adam's going to get taken out for it. Now, you do have Jeans getting knocked Bard as well from Greg Shot, but they've got two on the back of the Murado, and they're going to find another one. Who else but Cliv from the back of the car is going to find the knock, and Helen is going to get involved to finish off Y Kikamuka. Wild card gets caught up in the crossroads, and they are going home for this game. I mean, over Peekers just doing whatever they want. Well, this is just why. Why not? I, again, it's working. If it works, just keep doing it. They're not getting punished. It's continuing to climb. It's favorable for them. So you can't be shouting game six scrims, whatever. They're sitting there and just constantly holding down a good position around fifth. Game six scrims, yep. <laughs>
Anybody who's watched or played eSports scrims knows how sometimes those uh, those final games of the scrim get a little wacky. Uh, and Tropic now looks to make a maneuver down the road. There is the Freaks up ahead, Akkad. And I can see somebody cooking a grenade in the back. Akkad gets Ooh. a decent amount of damage. If that grenade is on point, they could be done. It is really good. It gets one, does a ton of damage for the others. Now it's just a full collapse. My god, Freaks just moved out of that hallway. Entropic charged into it, and it was just an absolute <laughs> death trap. Akkadi <laughs> just waiting around the door. Uh, QBE saw him a little bit too late there, so really nicely done. Uh, by the side of the Freaks, Overpeakers are like, well, that might have taken too long. I, there might have been a moment where Overpeakers could have crashed that fight. and They maybe, were just two kilometers out of the blue. Yeah, just a little bit out there. Just a bit outside. And uh, so they're going to have to stop up and wait. TE might have an angle into them. I'm, I can see shots ringing out. Nurins has a knock on a Solzi, so day trade here. Has, has an angle down on top of servers. Overpeakers is still just cutting their own path through the leaderboard, but also going to get some the Expendables doing some work in the back as AT is going to join in as well as, hey, Ninja, that's not nice. That's your teammate, him. Ninja. That's. <laughs> I looked at that and I'm like. He didn't even move. He was I, just. I know, he, did, he didn't even react. You can't, you can't blame that on, like, accidentally stepping in front. That was just, I don't know. Well, I was like, who has oh, an angle? What? Um. Okay, Akari. Uh, wow. Uh, 777 just gets absolutely slapped. He just blasted out of that car. Yeah. Now Jeem's looking down at Ninja 2K and going to be trying to skate into here as Bard is going to be able to line up and take him down. Overpeakers still playing their own game and forcing everybody to play it as well. Oh, look at the way he used that smoke. Duck Juice, I think, was considering trying to drive up there, but there's some rocks in the way. Bard taking a ton of damage from Duck Juice and is going to be knocked by the Molly there. And now grenades are ringing out up from way up on high as uh, Overpeakers want to see if they can stop the expendables in their tracks. It's far gone. All right, Nade is going to blow up just in front of his face. Is now he's going to look down, and now there is just good old duck juice hanging over there. Uh, I do want to point out in the southern part of the circle, guess what? We have FaZe that's shooting at them, but TMA is going to be creeping up right back behind FaZe at the same time that Cerberus is on the move right next to Day Trade. So this is its own fight that's about to break out depending on how focused in FaZe stays. Aetzee does seem like he realizes what's up, and now the defensive line for FaZe is moving way more down into that TMA direction. Well, TMA had, a, if there would have been a fight that kicked off between Day Trade and Cerberus, they could have maybe gone to their west, but instead they're going to have to fight FaZe. FaZe now capitalizing on the space that they have, trying to do some opening damage to TMA. Grenades are going to be raining in just a second, but Crazy actually finds the first one onto Diggory. Diggory in response gets Lulu always, so it's grenade for grenade, trade for trade, but TMA does not have the same numbers of phase. Gustav is trying to creep around and find a flank into it, but it's going to be Cerberus, Tycon, who gets on and managed to get the knock onto Gustav. Suddenly, that plan that FaZe had is coming apart, but guess what? Daytrade's also going to try to get involved in what's going on with Tycon and take him down. Now they're looking in. Himos is just going to be completely surrounded by Daytrade, while we have TMA still trying to make their move in where FaZe is going to be positioning at, and it's going to be Freaks that are taking the shots into TMA now. Yeah, the real winners of this is uh, 17. <laughs> they get to just chill on the road and watch everybody else just kind of duke this out. Circle, uh, maybe south, yeah, sort of. And uh, 17 there, just gonna be chilling on the edge. Now, day trade is starting to drive towards kind of both teams. AT gets taken down, Lulu always had been Rez, and he's gonna get the knock and the flush. Niggery around the corner, good for the kill on the Lulu always. So phase two left, but they have taken a ton of damage. I mean, TMA punishes him hard for that one, and now it's gonna be Poochills coming in here. Seeing if maybe he can pick up something, but whole time 17 gaming is just going to be looming in the north, waiting for whoever is going to be moving in. Be it the red team, be it the pink team, it's going to be a problem. Overpeakers now moving in as well, pretty close to United sight lines, as the north is going to get more twisted, as twisted minds are going to have to move pretty close to Danimal. Yoho's trying to crash question mark over on the other side of this, lost a player in their drive. Actually, they had to stop short, so that fight didn't really kick off. That grenade, pretty good, but doesn't get the knock on defects. The follow-up from Nurins, if it's cooked properly, could find one more member of base. That is perfect from Nurins. So well cooked. That air burst right in his face. There's nothing the Vex could have done about this one. Diggory, the last one up for phase. Now has to figure out where is he going to go? How is he going to handle anything as he is just trapped? Smoke's going to start coming out. He's going to have to lean into the Freaks side. Remember, they had sight lines into this just a second. Uh, 
a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation for Dickery. No doubt. Uh, he's in a ridiculously difficult spot. And so, uh, of course, I, I, you know, I feel for him as Twisted Mind has spotted Helen. Now they've been quiet throughout this one. May be able to find their first point. Donawa really spread out below this hill line. So Lambu starts moving his vehicle away from the nades of Lou. Looks like he's avoided much damage there. Really kind of smart, heady play there from the IGL for Donawa to keep those vehicles safe. United now also moving into a pretty interesting hillside defense as they were trying to get to make sure that they move away from overpeaker. So there's going to be a defended sight line. Kickstart is going to be able to take down Salute. This is right up next to the Danawa defensive lines. This means that Twisted Minds might also be coming in right back behind this one. So Danawa has got to find themselves some type of defense. And yep, yeah, it's going to be Spyro coming up right into this one. Are we going to see the continued pushes? This is just two members of Twisted Minds. Well, EU has got to find a good opportunity to potentially do some damage to Twisted Minds. They would love to at the very least. Uh, Let's see if they can. 17's little ghost is chilling in a shack. I, I mean, I have to assume the freaks are very keen uh, that that is a possibility. They are very aware that somebody will be doing that. And well, Shao Wu as well, shooting from the other side in his own shack, has a lot of day trade around him. Day trade uh, should be within grenade range, I believe. They might be able to get one in there. Well, yeah, <laughs> yep, yep, they got a Molly in there. This is just such a weird thing to see. Two members of 17 just in their own independent shacks fighting four-man squads entirely by themselves. Just 17 things, right? Yeah, only 17. Diggory's still alive. Did He's he still it? doing damage. Trying to now see if he can pick up some more out of it. He does manage to pick up Neurons before he goes down. Yeah, the blue came to him and he is gone, but he did a whole bunch of damage before they took him out. Meanwhile, the high ground was taken by Twisted Minds to start doing damage. They're trying to find the flush onto Belmoth. They had found the knock. Hikari now getting involved in this crossfire onto Daytrade. Daytrade's boot chills, able to find the safety of the vehicle flash, find some return fire to back Hikari off momentarily, but the Freaks now, Lil Ghost hasn't moved out of this shack just yet. I, I think the Freaks might have forgot about this. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Lil Ghost about to come in full on sneaky. Twisted Minds look like they're trying to come in and Yaho just gets absolutely demolished. Twisted Minds now has to contend up with question mark though as one side is gonna be contending with them as the other side has got their sights set into E United. Well, EU here needs to get this res on the flood. Uh, they really need three up if they're going to take any kind of successful fight. The, the trap has been sprung by Little Ghost, but uncharacteristic spray yeah. just a bit off, and Lash able to turn and prevent any further damage. The Freaks have 10 kills in this one. They're playing a really solid game. They've got complete control over the southeast corner of this. Only day trade kind of even in their territory, and there's only two up for them. So if they can avoid any further damage, they've got a shot at coming through here. And again, a win would shoot them way up the leaderboard. Big w game for them right now. Uh, these 10 kills were so, so needed. As now, Twisted Minds looks like they are managing to start to regroup at least three of them. Perfectix now trying to make a pathing over to get to his teammates. Hobbits is down, and they're going to try to commit into a res for question mark. They trade, though, still playing pretty close to this area where the freaks are going to be at. And you can kind of see there's a, a, a slight ravine running through this as we do have question mark that's got some high ground to look into it. And that's really what a lot of these teams are trying to control, most notably question mark and the freaks right now. Yeah, Perfectix had taken quite a bit of damage. A good grenade there, going to catch Dante. Put him down to about half, a little less than that. So Perfectix trying to find some space to probably try to go for a heal, but he's got a doozy right up above him, and a doozy isn't really able to push over this ridge with the firing lines that Twisted Minds has created on the other side. So a doozy here just has to fall back. There is not much else he can do unless he has a ton of grenades sitting around. Combined forces of QM and United could do a ton of work into Twisted Minds right now, but we're getting into those later stages of the game. And so now Twisted Minds going to try to see if they can shoo away what's happening. A doozy still wanting to move in, and he's getting closer and closer by the second to perfect exposition. While all this has been happening, though, we do see the Freaks have managed to take a much more dominant position down into the south. Yeah, I'd really like to see the Freaks clean out day trade here. Q QM is also trying to get involved in that, so the Freaks got to be careful that they don't overextend, that they don't give a kind of an open door for a question mark to come up over the top and maybe do some serious damage. Maybe see if you can just kind of push day trade into question mark, force that space. Meanwhile, the Twisted Minds, dude, the way they play this game is so freaking good. The way that they're covering Perfectix, the way that they're keeping EU pin, they had they backed off question mark in game space. Just absolutely beautiful. Boot chill up and over has Dante. He's got the 
the flesh as well. Finally, Hobbits takes him out. Flash, sliver of health left, though. A butterfly has just flapped its wings, and with that kill, suddenly it's going to be the Freaks coming alive to the south. Question mark now moving in. They're going to be sh have some vision into this one, so it's going to be the Freaks now taking some shots into QM. Perfectix now also starting to crest the hillside, looking back down on the team that was so close to him just a moment ago. He might be able to put in some work as well, but he does not want to overpeak into the Freaks line. And so with this, it's just going to be a quick step away. Circle did move, and it is favoring EU United's position. Yeah, I like the recognition here from the Freaks. You can leave one to harass, but you need to get the main forces away from from this fight as Twisted Minds also had an angle into them. So let, again, let QM deal with Twisted Minds. You go regroup, set up for the next circle, see if you can find some kind of safety in there, and maybe you can squeak on through, maybe get EU involved as well, and see if you can just kind of you know, force the other three teams to fight and you take some kind of control over this low ground. It's going to be difficult for the Freaks, no doubt about it. Yeah, this is the, the territory that they're trying to move into, though, is going to be where Twisted Minds as well as EU United is going to have some vision. And I think it's also going to be in a lower section of the circle. So you can see the Freaks, yeah. Looking in, they don't have a lot of options to move in. They've got the trees and stuff. Perfectix, though, does see himself some question mark members. Throwable's now starting to come out. Is this frag going to connect? Is this going to be Perfectix just lined in? And he is going to go down. A doozy wins it. Man, he runs up there quick to flush that one. A great counter push here by a doozy, knowing his teammate was weak, knowing that Perfectix was going to be looking for the frag, able to catch him off guard. Out in the open now are the Freaks trying to make their cross. Reload, though, hits the flanks of Twisted Minds, taking Lou down, gets the flush over to a doozy. But Akkad has been knocked for the Freaks, so now EU is starting to come to life. Oh, man, running right over here next to Batulans. I don't even know if they know that this is about to hit them. Spyro does at least manage to take down Phil first. Batulin spins back around. He does manage to take down Hobbits. And while QM did get an opening knock to start this one off, it's all about a doozy, the man himself who opened up the door for this capability is now going to have to run away from this Twisted Minds offensive line as he's just going to get taken down. Yeah, beautiful grenades here from Batulans. Again, beautiful spacing, beautiful position holding for the Twisted Minds. Kickstart has the Freaks out in the open. A lot of smokes are going to have to be expended by Kwang Dong if they are going to find any more safety in this next circle. They are starting to push down the hill. The blue is at their back. Kickstart and the others have them just dead to rights. It's Flood getting the knock on to Akkad. Lash looks to be soon to follow. See the fact the Freaks have had to go full on Pineapple Express. Smokes galore down there, but it's just going to be too many angles to be picked apart from. It's going to be United that gets a big chunk of this one, but they've got to be careful. Spyro is trying to creep over here. It looks like he wants to use his opportunity to kind of jump in. Rello is defending up for EU United to make sure nothing can happen, and there you go. We've got a 3v2 to finish this one out, as it's going to be a very northern fight along this hill. It's a huge fight for United. They need this win to climb back up to get close Twisted Minds and 17, a decent grenade, catches Spyro, does about half damage. Batulans and Spyro now starting to let go with some utility of their own, but United too far for the reach of the Twisted Minds players as it sits. Flood here gets the spot on Batulans, gets the information on the positioning. The rest of the players are on the edge of the circle mat, so eventually they're going to have to start making a move. The circle's going to force the issue here. Yeah, I mean, the center point on this one is nowhere near where we're at right now. E United isn't even really inside the circle yet. Rello's just kind of caught in an isolated spot. He's right next to Twisted Minds, but looks like they might be trying to bait something out, most notably Flood playing one side of this one. Arello's just trying to slow hold this position. Well, Kickstart's playing out in distance, though. Spyro takes a lot of damage. Arello looks like he might be trying to get some utility in, maybe support this one up. Starting to get this. Does it connect with anything? I don't know just yet. It looks like Kickstart is now making a more aggressive push on that left side, right up next to Batulans, and I don't think he's managed to find the angle to work with just yet. Yeah, I mean, Twisted Minds has enough cover that they're able to stay safe. The utility from... United has not done too much damage. It's been bullets that have been doing the heavy lifting for them. Batulans stuck underneath as he's getting stunned up to high heaven. Throws a molly at the tree. Wants to prevent them from pushing forward. A decent grenade this time does catch Batulans a bit. But they're going to start oh. a wrap. They're going to try to go for the flank. I love this. Just play into the nades. Move forward. It's going to be E-United that was trying to reposition through this one as the rave has just been popping off with all those flashes for so long. Now, moving into a 2v2. That blue does a huge chunk of damage, though. Batulans has got to be careful with it. They're going to go with a hit and run. They just run down there, hit kickstart because they know that that's going to be an influential person to be out inside this fight and now moving into the north, but Flood did get control over the center point. The proactivity from Twisted Minds is just unbelievable. How smart they are and how coordinated they are with that maneuver is so, so effective here to eliminate the big gun from United. Still, Flood has been absolutely nuts this tournament. He's got a good angle. He's got the 3X and he's ready to spray him down.
Got to play this character. Blood needs to maintain control over this area. Shots do connect with Batulans just enough. Rello looks like he's going to be trying to creep in back behind Spyro. The longer that this is going to be going on, it means the fact that it's going to be the Twisted Minds just forced down into Flood's sightline. You can see that they're trying to prod in. Can they find an angle as Rello just playing this one as patient as possible? Yeah, Rello just needs to make sure that he doesn't get caught out by Spyro. If he can find that angle down on Batulan. Batulan's playing on the edge of the smoke. He's got the angle. Can't find the knock. Does get the damage, but that was a big reveal in position. If he goes for a peek there, it could be disastrous. Flood now having more and more pressure mounting on his position with Rello now being exposed. With the smokes now out, you can see the Twisted Minds slow creeping into this one. Actually, every single second that we can see that EU United is having more and more pressure put on them. Could be a benefit. Rello does line up, finally does pick it up, and there you go, EU United.